This is the new iPhone 16e, and if you just bought one or just picked one up, you're probably pretty excited to get it set up and get all of your old iPhone data onto the new one. So in this video, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're gonna migrate everything from your old iPhone, whether that's an iPhone XR or an iPhone 11, iPhone 10, or even this iPhone SE over to the new iPhone 16e. We're gonna move everything, including your apps, your files, your photos, your messages, your contacts, everything from the old iPhone to the new one. Now, there are two ways to do the migration from the old iPhone to the new one. The first one is going to be a direct migration where your iPhones basically create a wireless network and talk directly to each other and transfer everything from the old iPhone to the new one, except for the apps. The apps will still have to download. My biggest issue with the direct migration option is that during the entirety of the migration process, neither iPhone is accessible for you to use. Now, if you have a ton of data, photos, videos, you're not using iCloud at all, that process can take quite a long time, including up to many hours to actually do the migration. But if you are paying for iCloud storage and you have iCloud backups turned on, then the iCloud migration option can actually go quicker. So if you do an iCloud migration, all of your data that's been backed up by the old iPhone will download to the new iPhone. And during that time, your old iPhone will be usable so you can actually do things. So if it does take an hour or two hours or whatever, you can still use the old iPhone while the new one's getting set up. Now, the good news is that even if you do not pay Apple for iCloud storage, you can actually get free iCloud storage for up to 30 days to do a backup and to do a restore. So when you actually place an order for your new iPhone, if depending on where you buy it from, Apple might know that you actually already bought an iPhone. So here in the settings app, it says, get ready for your new iPhone. So this old iPhone knows that I bought a new one because of my Apple ID, and it's going to give me the option to make sure that this iPhone is backed up. And if I don't have iCloud storage, it will give me 30 days free of iCloud backup storage. Now, if for some reason this option is not showing at the top of your settings application, you can still get there by going down to general and then scroll down to transfer or reset iPhone. And here, prepare for your new iPhone. You can go ahead and tap on get started. Now, because this iPhone is already set up with iCloud, it's saying I'm already good to go. However, if you weren't, you just go ahead and follow the steps and you'll be able to do a full backup before you get your new iPhone. So you can actually start this process days or a week before or whatever, just so that you can be ready for your new iPhone when it arrives. Now that we're all set with the old iPhone and ready to go, we can go ahead and power on the new iPhone. So with the new iPhone turned on, we should be able to go ahead and get started. We'll swipe up and we should get a notification on the old iPhone asking if we want to set up the new iPhone with the old one using your Apple ID account. I do, so I'm gonna tap on continue. And it's going to ask me for my touch ID or face ID, depending on the phone you have. And after a couple of seconds, you're going to get this set up where you need to scan what's on the new iPhone with the old iPhone to basically pair them. So go ahead and do that. It sees the orb, and now the iPhones are pairing together. Now it's verifying on the old iPhone. Do I wanna set up the new one with this Apple ID? Do I wanna set it up for me? Yes, I do. The new iPhone wants to know the passcode of the old iPhone. And now the new iPhone is going to contact Apple because it's now connected with Wi-Fi and now knows my Apple ID, and it's going to activate the new iPhone. Now the new iPhone is going to ask if I want to transfer my iPhone phone number from the old one to the new one, and of course I do. Now one thing you might not be aware of with the iPhone 16e is that it doesn't have a physical SIM card. With previous iPhones, you might have been able to just pull out the SIM card from the old iPhone and put it into the new one. However, with the iPhone 16e, it does not have a physical SIM card slot. It actually has an eSIM or electronic SIM, which means that there is no physical SIM card inside of here. Now, the good news is if you have one of the big carriers, AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, this process is super simple. I'll show you how it works. If you have another carrier like Mint or Consumer Cellular, the process may not work and you may have to do it afterwards using that carrier's app or worst case, give them a call. So I do want to transfer my phone number. So I will go ahead and tap on that. And yes, I want to transfer the phone number. And now at the bottom, it's preparing and it's going to take just a couple of minutes to actually migrate the phone number from the old iPhone to the new one. And there we are, there's confirmation that the phone number has been transferred over to this new iPhone. Continue. Now it's saying that there's an important software update that I should go ahead and install, but I'll go ahead and do that later. Data and privacy information, Apple does not sell your data, so continue. And now there's the Face ID setup. And if you've never used Face ID, you've only been using Touch ID with older iPhones, then this is going to be a treat for you. So we'll just go ahead and tap on continue. And it's gonna tell you exactly what to do to basically scan your face so that you can use your face to unlock and to make purchases and stuff. So we'll tap on continue and you're just going to align your face in the box. And I just like to look left or right and then move my head in a circle. It says first scan complete and that's it. Now, if you do wear a face mask and you wear one often, you can actually go through an additional scan so that it can actually better 
scan your face when you're wearing a mask, but if you don't wear a mask that often, then just go ahead and set up later if you need to. Now we're to the transfer or migration options. Again, you can do iCloud migration or you can transfer directly from the old iPhone. Now there isn't actually a lot of data on this old iPhone at the moment. However, I still think that iCloud is the better option for most people because again, if you do have a bunch of data, it's going to take time to move everything over. And it kind of sucks if both of these iPhones are completely unusable during that migration process. So we're going to download from iCloud. Now the iPhone is actually going to fully sign into your iCloud account. And for some reason, this does take about five or six minutes or eight minutes, a stupid long time for what it's actually doing. So be back in just a moment. When that's done, the old iPhone is going to say a new iPhone has been added to your account. Just go ahead and tap on OK. And now the options here to make this your new iPhone. It wants to, by default, move over your applications and your settings and your wallet items. So we'll just go ahead and tap on continue. How do you want to update your iPhone? Do you want to update automatically? I like to actually install my updates manually, so I will just choose to download automatically. Yes, I do want location services for things like maps. So yes, location services on. With stolen device protection, you can actually set it to where your home and your work or specific locations are allowed to be places where you can actually change your password. I'm going to leave that turned off for now, but you should definitely look into that if you want to know more about that. Now for each of my cards in Apple Wallet, it's going to ask me to verify with the security code. So you can just type in the security code for each one and then they will be added to your Apple Wallet on this new iPhone. Next, you're given a little bit of information about Apple Intelligence because the new iPhone 16e is built with Apple Intelligence inside. It's just giving you a little bit of information about it. Just tap on continue. Next, it's telling you about visual intelligence, which you can access from the control center to basically use the camera to scan whatever's in front of you to look it up to see more information about it, to try and find it, to buy it, or whatever. With the iPhone 16e, you do get that newish action button on the left side right here, and you can actually program this button to do a number of different things. By default, it wants to be the mute button like it has always been on older iPhones where you have the mute switch on the side. However, this time it's a button instead of a switch, but you can also customize that to whatever you want. So you click on customize and it gives you a number of different options you can use for that action button. I like to actually use the flashlight. I find that to be super convenient to turn on the flashlight, but you can also use it for visual intelligence or to open the camera or to set a focus mode on your iPhone. We'll just go ahead and set it to flashlight for the moment. Continue. The iPhone 16e has emergency SOS, so it has crash detection, it has emergency satellite communications and different things, so it's just giving you a little bit of information about that right here and how to actually activate it. Continue. Saying there's a software update, and I guess it wants me to update to 18.3.1 right now, so I guess we'll go ahead and do that. And like I said before, because we're doing an iCloud migration, we are basically done with the old iPhone, so we can click on done, and now we can use this iPhone while the new one is doing its updates and doing its download of data. So we are not completely stuck. We can actually talk to our friends. We can communicate. We can surf the web. We can watch YouTube. We can do whatever we want on our old iPhone without waiting for the new one to finish. Now that the update is complete, we can go ahead and continue. It's asking about appearance. Do we want to change how big things are on the display? We'll just go ahead and leave it at default for now. Change if you need to. And it's asking for quick start. So because the iPhone had to reboot, we basically have to repair with the old iPhone again and kind of do a couple of things over real quickly. So we'll just go ahead and put that to sleep and turn the old one back on. And it's asking us to do this pairing thing again. So we'll go ahead and do that. So now we're back to making this our iPhone again. We've already transferred the wallet items. We'll just go ahead and tap on continue. And now it's actually doing the restore process because we chose previously to restore from iCloud and we're restoring from this iPhone right here. So this is going to take just a few minutes to actually migrate what it needs to. It's going to start downloading some of the data. All of the apps will actually download in the background after the iPhone is restored. So what it's transferring right now is just the required things to get you up and running. So it's going to basically download what all apps need to be installed, what applications or what data needs to be restored in the background. So this will take just a minute or two, and then it's going to reboot. And there we go. So now the iPhone has been restored. It basically is set up the exact same as your old iPhone. And as you can see, all of these applications are grayed out because they're going to start downloading in the background. But once all of that is set up, once all the download is complete, your iPhone is going to be up and running exactly like your old iPhone was, including the background desktop picture. Now you're probably going to get a bunch of notifications saying your iPhone is ready for Apple intelligence. You can go ahead and tap on that if you want. And here's gonna tell you again, the same thing that we saw before about Apple intelligence. 
and visual intelligence and using Siri. So do I want to use Siri? Sure. I can double tap on the bottom to use Siri. Continue. Siri, how's the weather? Hey Siri, send a message. Siri, set a timer for three minutes. Hey Siri, get directions home. Siri, play some music. All right, Siri's now ready. And Apple Intelligence is enabled, so you'll be able to use that as you want. And if you want more information on Apple Intelligence, uh, let me know down below, because I haven't created a specific Apple Intelligence video, but uh, you know, if you want to see that, let me know. And if you just go back to the main settings window, you can see that the restore is in progress and it shows you there's an estimated five gigabytes of data left to be downloaded to restore all of your data and your apps and whatnot. So that's really all there is to it for migrating to your new iPhone. Now, don't be surprised if your new iPhone does run a little bit hot for a while because it's doing a lot. It's downloading all of your data, it's indexing everything for search, and it's setting up Apple intelligence. So it's probably gonna run hot for a little while, a couple hours after you do it or so, but totally normal, don't worry about it. But it really is all there is to the migration process, moving from your old iPhone to the new one. And we moved everything, apps, files, data, Phone number, all that stuff is now moved over to the new iPhone and you're ready to rock. And I know this migration process can make some people a little bit anxious, but don't worry, just follow along, you'll be just fine. But if you have any questions about the migration process or about the iPhone 16e specifically, let me know in the comments down below. I'll have some more videos on the iPhone 16e coming out shortly, but until that happens, check out this video right over here. You're gonna love it. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it, hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.